Capcom is making waves with their newest RPG, and it's b the biggest RPG they've ever launched, but there's been some issues and community complaints. We're going to go over that. We also have, apparently, Sam Altman is still courting Hollywood in spite of the writer strikes that we're trying to get that to stop. We'll get into that. We also have a game whose DLC seems to be a giant apology for the way the game originally launched. <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll, we, this is our our biggest section for the week. So let's jump into gaming and tech. Welcome nerds to this week's edition of the gaming and tech news, generally speaking. Now, I'm no Linus or Spawnwave or Gamers Nexus or insert channel that is dedicated to the tech and gaming news here. That's not what you're getting here. This is just enough to keep you informed, generally speaking. We do this just about every week as part of a larger news show called The Week in Nerddom over on the main channel. You can find that linked down in the description or at the end of this video. Now let's talk about some gaming and tech and maybe even some like photo video kind of news as well. As I said before, it is still going to be abbreviated this week. So gaming and tech, while it is pretty sizable, we're still cutting out some stuff. There's no, there's no, Follow-ups or corrections, there are also no suggestions, but we do have just about everything else. We have some trailers to talk about. First up is Marvel 1943, The Rise of Hydra. This is the Cap and Black Panther game that has been, you know, we talked about it when it was just rumored, and then we got those teaser images, and we were like, what the hell is going on? Well, this is what the hell is going on. It looks amazing. Like, just the, 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 sneaking the tactical espionage because i've got metal gear on the brain the 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 tactical side of this looks like it's going to be very well executed and honestly like i just saw while i was doing the research last night on twitter somebody put up a comparison a screen cap of she hulk the the she hulk series and then a screen cap of this game and this game looks better than the She-Hulk series does. So that kind of tells you a little bit of something. This just looks incredible. We do have voice cast announcements that we didn't have previously. So we're gonna go over that real quick. We have Drew Malarin, more, more line rather, sorry. I've totally butchered that name. He's going to be the voice of Cap. Uh, Kari Payton, yes, please and thank you. I love Kari Payton, uh, is going to be the voice of Azuri who is the Black Panther in this, which is T'Challa's grandfather. We have Me Megan, I'm not gonna be able to say her last name and I apologize, Me Megalyn, rather, Echikunawok, will be Nanali and Mark Richardson will be playing Gabriel Jones. So those are the two ancillary characters to Cap and Black Panther. So. The, the trailer looks hype as hell, like just super damn awesome. Go check it out. All of the release date and information will be coming soon. We don't have an official launch date just yet. We do know that it is going to be sometime in 25. So from there, we have one of the headline pieces, and that is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. That's right, we're still talking about this game, even though it had such an abysmal launch in so many ways. Well, season one for the DLC content is going to be absolutely free. Go figure. <laughs> it's almost like they're trying to apologize for doing such a horrible job with the initial launch. But so the uh, DLC is live as we speak. Uh, actually, no, I take that back. Is live tomorrow or Friday, whatever, whichever. But it's going to be live probably by the time you see this uh, episode because so many people who subscribe to the channel don't actually watch it until a day or two after it's been posted, even though I put so much hard work. Anyway, so the theme for season one, as far as DLC goes, is going to be the joke. Joker. Now, it is an interesting little spin on the Joker, slightly interesting, I guess is appropriate, in that it's not the Joker from this world. It's so, obviously, we're dealing with DC, and they've been doing multiverse stuff since, like, the 70s, so they we're no stranger to pulling characters from other universes, and that's what they've done here. They have, they've kind of set up their own universe, which is kind of the Arkham universe, uh, but I don't know if, it, if we could even necessarily give it that much credit but uh, so this is going to be a joker from a different elseworlds kind of situation and also all of the stuff that happens in season one dlc is going to 
take place, is going to be flavored, I guess, like the Joker, the, this Joker's else world. So, uh, where is it? Episode one, because there's two episodes for season one. Uh, episode one is going to be themed around fear. It's going to be what is available on the 28th. A bunch of new gear, new games, yada, yada, yada. And then episode two is going to be themed duality. It will be released as mid-season update. Again, new weapons, new all kinds of stuff. Uh, plus, it will introduce themes based around supervillains Reverse Flash and Black Manta, plus Two-Face, obviously, because duality. So, if you are playing Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and you were very disappointed by the way it launched, like basically everyone was, then hopefully this does enough to appease you, at least enough to get you to play a little bit more Honestly, if this one doesn't do well, I can't imagine that they're going to continue with more DLC. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. And then we have one last trailer, and this has to do with Final Fantasy 16, also having to do with DLC. Rising Tide DLC is going to be available April 18th. And this trailer kind of makes me wish I was a bit more of a Final Fantasy fan, because this kind of looks pretty, pretty damn hype. I... I don't play, I don't have a PlayStation, so I don't play the Final Fantasies, so I, I, I'm just gonna have to watch everybody else do it on Let's Plays, but trailer looks pretty damn awesome, go check it out. So that's what we got in trailers. Let's talk now about some regular ass news. We are going to start things off. This is where the meat and potatoes is for this section. We're gonna start things off. I would really love to thank our partner, channel partner here at Generally Nerdy, and that is Dubby. Dubby has been so kind as, as to join up in a partnership with us and and give us a way to earn a little bit of money here on the channel and with a proper tasty product and something that i actually enjoy consuming myself so even if i wasn't sponsored by them to a certain degree like i would still be actively consuming this this is the push and punch variation our next one that we're going to try here on the channel is the cali o cream it's the orange cream sickle one w is a bit cheaper than the competition so there's that the only way to beat their prices is if you shop at the dollar store to get very very lucky w has more than just caffeine blend in their mix there are some some nootropics in here that help your brain focus definitely when i'm at work and i need to buckle down the caffeine helps Helps, sure, but the nootropics help me focus and get the food at my restaurant out fast without any mistakes. And legitimately, I really dig the Dubby stuff. So that is our sponsor spot for the day. Thank you very much, Dubby. And now let's get back to the show with China. Apparently, China has banned the US. And it's not exactly what you're thinking, though, kind of. So what with us kind of focusing on TikTok and and very likely banning TikTok in the long run, it seems that China is kind of taking the uh, a, a much more serious but opposite approach in that they're going to be banning chip manufacturers from China, chip manufacturers that originate in the US from China. So the chips specifically are going to be from Intel and AMD. Uh, they're severely limiting imports of process, uh, CPUs. C there is a list of 18 CPUs that are going to be approved by the Chinese government, which sounds so ridiculous to me. The only one of which is going to be using x86 ar architecture, which is what kind of makes most Windows big based machines function and and that one with the x86 architecture is the one that's built by a Chinese manufacturer and is honestly just m probably it, very likely I guess because we don't know this for certain because any information we get from the Chinese government should be assumed to be a lie is the one that functions the best that runs the homegrown Chinese operating system I did, don't have the name of the operating system in my notes because who really cares but uh, yeah very interesting so there's there's a minor ban on Windows it would seem as well so so yeah, as that kind of develops, we'll be keeping some tabs on it. It's a little more uh, in depth than we normally cover here on Generally Nerdy, but we will get to it in, in some updates and stuff as it evolves. Next, we have the European Union uh, is apparently launching some non-compliance investigations in, with the Digital Markets Act against Apple, Meta, and Google. Notably, not Microsoft for some reason, even though 
Even though there's plenty of evidence to suggest that Microsoft is just as guilty as the rest, uh, for some reason, they're just not looking into them. So the Digital Markets Act aims to ensure fair competition in digital markets. Uh, yeah, they're all trying to be the only fish in the pond, effectively. So of course they're going to violate these, these set of rules that they only possible penalty is a very small fine in the grand scheme of things. That is all we have really right now because the, the, the investigations were just announced as they evolve as they will. We will definitely be keeping some tabs on this in the follow-up section. Next up, we have Sam Altman courting Hollywood. OpenAI is, is trying to get used in Hollywood Studios, which seems a little suspect because that's kind of that's one of the major parts of why we just had the writer and actor strike is because they're trying to fight back against AI. Well, it would seem that Sam Altman did not get the the memo because he is taking OpenAI and demonstrating it for some Hollywood studios because he is giving access to Sora, which if you'll remember, Sora is that video AI that OpenAI is working on. Sora ridiculously powerful to the point where it had a lot of normie types very convinced that these were real images he's he's giving access early access to Sora to some movie studio types not the least of which being Tyler Perry who seems to be very much on board with the use of AI in his productions has said things to the effect of like he no longer will need to go on location in order to film certain things because he'll have access to AI that can just fake the location for the actors or potentially even fake the actors. But I mean, he didn't go so that far. I'm definitely paraphrasing, but that's kind of the logical extension of the way he's thinking right now. So it's just very interesting that that is the direction that's going the i don't i really don't know what is going to happen with this as as this goes if this goes anywhere because like we said uh, tyler perry has his hands on it right now it would seem uh, that hasn't been explicitly made known but the way he's talking about it and the way sam altman is is presenting it to hollywood it kind of makes sense there's there's definitely going to be more developments here so yeah that we're going to Keep going that one. Uh, and then our final piece of regular ass news this week is Dragon's Dogma 2. Capcom is under fire from the community, but it would seem that that's not exactly fair. So what, let, what, we're gonna get into this. So uh, the microtractions situate, microtransactions, I can say words. The microtransactions situation is fairly, it looks at the, it looks on a surface level like it's a bad situation because there are microtransactions to literally fast travel. Um, there's there's microtransactions for just about everything, but from what I've been able to gather, approximately like 95% of the things that you can purchase through microtransactions are also things that you can just earn, and some of them fairly easy in game. So they're just capitalizing on lazy people. That's all this is, is lazy gamers, people who don't don't have the time to to grind and it's uh, again it doesn't even seem i haven't played dragon's dogma so i can't be i can't don't hold me to this necessarily too much but it would seem that a lot of this isn't even really a grind so much as just playing the game just doing the things and going through normal events in the game you don't have to actively because grind would imply like you're going out and seeking these little side quests that don't do anything for the main story but they get you gear they get you money and they get you all these things right so that you can further progress in the main story. Well, it would seem that a lot of the stuff in these microtransactions are things that just happen. <laughs> so, I don't know, it's, Mortal Kombat's been doing this for some time. You've been able to purchase easy fatality coins, I guess you could call them, in Mortal Kombat since Mortal Kombat might be X, but I think it was nine where you could do easy fatalities. It's basically two buttons and you can pull off a fatality from anywhere. So, this isn't exactly a new concept to me, though apparently RPG players, this is a fairly new concept for because this is the first that they've ever, that, uh, this is the first that I've heard such a large complaint from a, an RPG community. So yeah, very interesting there. The other side of the criticism that Capcom has been getting about Dragon's Dogma is the performance 
performance issues, that there is some anti-cheat software that is, and, and this is very cursory information. If you want to go a little bit deeper into this, then go check out the Gamers Nexus video on it because they go into great depth but this is not that kind of video. We're just talking about the headlines, right? So uh, there is basically the way it boils down to is on PC, uh, there is some, some frame rate issues. You're not getting the kind of frame rates that would be expected from a AAA title. So the, the, the rudimentary explanation for that is they have some anti-cheat software that is put in place in a lot of PC games that has a fairly major effect on performance for reasons that are far too in-depth for us to get into here. But that's kind of the, the, the gist of, of the issue. And usually that developers who implement this software, once they no longer implement this software because piracy takes over and people who are pirating the games have better experience than people who are paying for the game, any plethora of other reasons why they would get rid of this and go for a different anti-cheat system, usually those things happen and when that happens, performance gets better weird they are currently saying that they do not believe it is their anti-cheat system but the community kind of knows better so as this one kind of evolves very likely what's going to happen is we're going to see that the 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 internal structure of how the pc side works is just going to get better only can get better as far as the console side that one very much remains to be seen it's not quite as dramatically bad as the pc side though that's very much debatable you're looking at a drop from 50 fps 50 to 60 fps down to half of that to 25 to 30 fps which i mean in certain respects is cinematic but in the world of gaming more frames equals better so yeah it just seems like seems like they're they've got a little bit of work on their hands but it is a modern triple a game so that's kind of to be expected anymore right that though nerds is what we've got for gaming and tech let's move on that brings us to the end of the video, nerds. Thank you very much for joining me for the news. Once again, there is a full and probably much more up-to-date and recent episode of the news, the full-length version, if you will, called The Week in Nerdom over on the main channel, linked down in the description and probably link popping up somewhere around my face right about now. So click on that, go check that out as well. Or if you prefer your news in more truncated pieces, then by all means, just stick around here and go check out some of the other stuff we offer on this channel. Thank you very much for joining me. We will see you in the next one. Before we go, always, always remember, nerds, that if it is generally nerdy, it's probably here.